Breakfast Club, bitches. Breakfast Club, bitches. I'm glad they put y'all together. Y'all are like a mega force. Y'all just took over every... Y'all just know the team. Wake your punk ass up. This Chris Brown. I've officially joined the Breakfast Club. Say something, mother... I'm with it. The world's most dangerous morning show. Breakfast Club, bitches. Good morning. Yo 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 Good morning, Charlemagne. Good morning, Angela Yee. Peace to the planet. It's Monday. Yes, happy Monday. Happy Monday. How we feel, man? What's the day? What's the day? April twenty sixth. Twenty sixth. Okay. A few more days of April left. Man, the year the year really is flying by. By the way. I mean, I'm sure yeah, it's not it's a lot going, going no, on. Yeah, I'm sure it's not going no faster than any other year, but it just feels that way for whatever reason. What'd you do this weekend? Well, yeah? I was in New Orleans this weekend, and I was meeting with the supermarket chain Rouse's about my press juices, drink fresh juice, and my coffee. Coffee uplifts people to get my products in stores, so that's exciting. Okay, congratulations on that. Do they people- have over sixty um, supermarkets. Coffee is like legal cocaine. <laughs> people that love caffeine really, 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 really love caffeine. And they're listening to me right now. And they don't even want to hear my voice until they can get the, uh, the shot, you know, of that brown powder. Yeah. But coffee has a lot of health benefits. Really? Yeah. And the caffeine in coffee is natural. You know, caffeine comes from the plants, the the, um, the coffee beans. They actually make caffeine to help prevent the um, insects from attacking them so it's like a feel a force field around them I, and that's I, what creates the caffeine i had no idea what are the health benefits of coffee though because every time i drink coffee i just get the runs yeah well actually it's very good for that for your digest uh, your digestive system <laughs> oh so that's a good it's thing good. that's a great thing um, okay. and it's natural and it improves your energy levels and they said it helps you burn fat it can also the caffeine can improve your physical performance and there's mm. also essential nutrients in coffee. All of those things, it can lower your risk of type two diabetes. But the thing is that it's what people put in coffee sometimes that can be harmful. So, so the sugar add a lot of cream, yeah. Okay. Wow. Angela, he's really in the coffee business because I didn't know there was any health benefits. I just thought people drink coffee because they wanted to wake up in the morning. It can lower your risk of some types of cancer. So the best thing you can do is have black coffee. But I add almond milk to mine, which is not so bad either. Okay. Well, drop on the clues bombs for all the coffee drinkers out there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. And it was started in Ethiopia, so it's our thing. Okay. Whatever you got to do to, uh, you know, get up in the morning. Just as long mm-hmm. as you're drinking your coffee and listening to us. Morning, Thank guys. You. Morning. Hey. Good morning. Hey. We, we, got, we got something that's like coffee coming in this morning. That's right. It Dr. may not have the health benefits of coffee, but boy, it's going to wake your ass up. That's right. <laughs> Dr. Umar Johnson <laughs> will be joining us this morning. <laughs> well, Dr. how did that go? Dr. Umar um, Johnson has been here. Uh, this will be his fifth time on The Breakfast Club. Was he here for any of them? I don't recall. I don't think so. I was so. there one and a half times. Once I was there, and then another time I had to leave halfway through to catch a flight. Yeah. Yeah. So for all you people who don't drink coffee, but you need a little pick pick me upper this morning. Dr. Umar Johnson will definitely do that for you this morning. <laughs> Goodness gracious. A pick me upper or put me down or something. And that conversation just wouldn't end. We were on the it was like what? Damn that hour and a half? Nah, it wasn't that long. I mean, how many times you try to wrap it up? Mad times. An hour and 17 minutes, and I think Charlemagne and I asked maybe three questions. Maybe four. Well, Dr. Umar Johnson, all you got to do is just put him in front of a microphone and let him go. You just got to steer him in the right direction. That's all. There you go. What you want? What you want to talk about uh, police brutality? Let's discuss it. Yeah. You want to talk about interracial relationships? Oh, let's discuss it. And why his business, why, why he why he doesn't believe in them, but it's about business and not not bigotry? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. All well, right. I wouldn't be here without an interracial relationship. Well, you should have been here to defend yourself. No, maybe not. (laughs) That's the one thing I said. Well, that's the reason why he's probably not here today. All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. Front page news. What are we talking about? Well, Chicago police say they've arrested the man in connection to the murder of Jaslyn Adams, the seven-year-old girl who was fatally shot while at McDonald's drive-thru. All right. We'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. You all right over there, Thomas? The computer just had like a little... Don't blame it on the computer. Bro, I hit the button and it Move your hands faster. All right. Okay. Where we starting, ye? 
Well, CDC data is showing that more Americans are missing their second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. So people went in and got their first one, but they said up to 8% of people did not go ahead and get their second one. But part of that could be because of how things are being reported, right? Like you might go to one place, to one entity to get the first dose. And then if you go to a different place, like a mass vaccination site or a retail pharmacy and other vaccination efforts, they might not be linked in. So they might not know that after you got that first one, you did get that second one. And people are scared, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, around the way, you hear people saying that they had bad uh, reactions to the second shot. Yeah, I definitely did. And, and it said that uh, the first shot gives you 85% efficiency rate. So they said a lot of people just don't want to come back for the second mm-hmm. shot. They're saying this. They're like, I- I'll take the 85%, but I don't want to get sick. So they're just not coming Cause, back. Because when you black, all I got to hear is, you know, one person that I know getting uh, the balls palsy, Bell's palsy, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Hear another, palsy. Hear another person saying that they uh, went and had a reaction and went into a coma. It's mm-hmm. just like, huh? Okay. Yep. Well, the FDA and the CDC have also lifted the pause on that Johnson & Johnson uh, COVID-19 vaccine. So it has been approved for use once again. And all of this is after now they're saying is a total of 15 women who had blood clots from it. But you can't lift you can't lift the pause on Johnson and Johnson. I mean Johnson and Johnson is always gonna be a pause in certain circles. Especially <laughs> in Harlem. Especially in Harlem, okay? <laughs> All right. It is what it is. Yeah, so what they are saying that is uh, with these fifteen women, now what they're doing is giving you that warning. So the risk they said and the benefit of the vaccine shows that they're preventing tremendous disease, but you need to be cognitive of the fact that you could potentially get a rare blood clotting disorder and it's fifteen women. So basically it's on you. It's like people who smoke cigarettes. You know, he's going to give you the warning yeah. and tell you that it causes yep. cancer. So we're telling you that it causes blood clots, but it's on you if you want to take it. Correct. Yeah, like all those commercials where you see side effects may include, mm-hmm. and then there's 30 things listed. Mm-hmm. So We never but read I that can, fine print, by the way. Yeah, I can guarantee you that's going to make people not want to do that because there's such a risk involved with it. All right, now a man has been charged in connection to a seven-year-old girl's murder in the McDonald's drive through And this was a horrifying story. For us to hear, but Chicago police say they have arrested 18-year-old Marion Lewis. Mm, mm, and he's mm. the person who's been arrested in connection to the murder of Jasmine Adams. She was with her father waiting in line at the McDonald's drive through And according to the Chicago Police Department, they told reporters that he was involved in that shooting but did not say that he was the one who pulled the trigger. They said there everything appears to be gang-related and that there are still two other suspects that remain at mm, large. Mm, mm, mm. They said, you can run, but you cannot hide. We are going to bring you to justice for this crime. The Adams family deserves nothing less. Oh, yeah. uh, according to authorities they found two weapons in his vehicle including an AK-47 and they did confirm those weapons were connected to Jasmine's murder. Yeah that man that young man will be telling on uh, the other two suspects this week and and, and rightfully so because I don't even know how you could remotely sleep. I don't know how you can sleep when you kill anybody but remotely when you kill a seven-year-old girl? Well the two other suspects have been identified by the police but they have not been charged. They said we don't know immediately now if either suspect was in custody yet. Oh gotcha gotcha gotcha. Wow. Well Amen. So he's being held without bond on a charge of murder and 18 other charges, including three accounts of attempted murder and aggravated assault of a police officer. And I did a little research and I saw what they went through to actually get him. And it was like a, a definitely a high speed car chase situation. Well, wow. listen, people like that, you got to take off the street. And the reason you got to take them off the street, because if they would do something like that to a seven year old girl, what you think they're going to do to you or somebody that you love? You know what? Did, mm-hmm. did they say they knew the seven year old was was in the car, or they just didn't care? Did yeah, they, they probably didn't uh, care. Yeah, we don't know about that. I mean, they, mm. what happened was the two guys that were the ones who he was the driver, right? That they ca- that they captured. The two other guys were the ones who got out of the car because they have footage and started shooting in the car. They actually hit the father in his torso, and so he's in the hospital. And then they shot and killed the young seven year old Jasmine Adams. Wow. And, and by the way, I mean, you know, if you let off at a McDonald's drive through. It's not like you give a damn about who's in whatever car. You know what I mean? McDonald's? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They found him by his Facebook page, and then he got in the car. It was an Audi, so they had identified his car, and it was like a high-speed car chase. And, uh, you know, he got out, and then he tried to carjack other people. There was like a family in the car with two kids in the back that couldn't get out of the car seats. And he shot through the glass window trying to get the car. Goodness gracious. Thanks. Well... That is your front page news. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you're upset, you need to vent. Phone lines are wide open. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up. Wake up. Wake your ass up. 
This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? This is Trex in Jersey. Hey, what's up, bro? Get it off your chest. All right, so look, last month, this guy called up, said he was disabled when he was trying to get a house, and you told him that he could. I'm kind of dealing with a similar situation, and I was hoping you could pass the plug. Uh, what are you trying to do? I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to buy a house, but right now I'm on um, SSI, so I don't get a lot of money. Okay, where you from? I'm from New Jersey. New Jersey. Uh, how, much do you ha- how much do you have in savings, if any? So in savings, I basically got my STEMI. <laughs> have what? I basically got it's my stimulus check. Like a little bit extra. <laughs> okay, all right. So you have you have uh, about what fourteen hundred dollars in savings, and you're trying to purchase a home. And you, I'm you, trying to, but I didn't any, know much have, about FHA. Do um, you have any income coming in? Yeah, I got my own social security. Okay. All right. Well, um, I will plug you with uh, it's a it's a lender. His name is Matt. He um he deals with FHA, and he could probably guide you to sometimes they give him grants to people to help people with their down payments. Um, a lot of that is tightening up right now because there's, there's a lot of money that's not there anymore. But if you hold uh, on, I, I'll put you on to to, to Matt. He, he he helps a lot of people get you know FHA loans and and grants and tries to help people out. He just helped a couple over the weekend. I did a seminar in Orlando and he was able to get them something. So hopefully he can help you out, brother. I really appreciate that. I uh, hold on the line, all right? Yo, Charlemagne, don't you change? I um okay. I don't, I don't care how much they call you gay. Don't you change. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, <hold on. laughs> left. All right. I don't care how much they call you gay, but don't you change. Hello, who's this? Good morning, MV. Good morning, Charlamagne. Good morning, Angela. What's going on? Rick, what, what up, King? Good morning. What's going on, yo? Uh, how, you got, how you guys feeling this morning? Blessed, good, black, good, and highly good. favored. Likewise, my friend. Likewise. Hey, I, I, I just want to go back to that earlier subject you were talking about, that shooting. There's been 25 shootings this weekend in New York City alone. I we heard. can't talk about police reform and talk about wanting to have uh, the cops treat us better if we out here are lighting it up. We yes, we can. we can. Why do we say and stupid we, stuff we, like we that? Can, we can, but we, then if we do that, we're giving them reason, right? We're giving them a reason to distract us from the obvious, right? So please, I'm just giving a disclaimer to everybody this summer. We want to be outside. But we can't be outside if y'all gonna be lighting it up. We can't survive Corona to come back outside and get shot. I'm not trying to have it. You know what I'm saying? So and, please. And, and we gotta stop. New York City. We gotta stop acting please. like America doesn't have a gun violence problem. What, I well, saw. Brooklyn I, got a gun, a gun violence problem. Of, 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 gun of violence course problem. they do, but America has a gun violence problem. Period. I, I saw the guy at the Oscars talking about that last night. So yes, you can talk about America's gun violence problem and discuss no, I'm not, I'm police reform I'm right at the now. same time. I'm talking about the gun violence problem, and I'm telling the people that have guns that don't need to be having no guns, stop shooting the place up because we don't need it this summer. We don't I agree need it. Period. That. Right, that right, I agree so with. Chill out with the guns and chill out with the shootings, because right now we trying to be back outside in the summertime, and this is not it. Yeah, because I don't like it up, and we don't. We're not trying to do that this summer. Right, yeah, we're trying to have some fun and make up for last summer. That's right, because I don't care so. if it's a seven-year-old girl in the parking lot of a McDonald's drive-through or a mass shooting at a concert or a church or somewhere else. America got a gun violence problem. Absolutely. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So you better have the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hello, this is Mark. Marcus, what's up? Get it off your chest. What's good, man? I was trying to, just trying to uh, thank Charlamagne, man. A real breakup. You and Charlamagne broke up? No, nah, I said I was thanking him for helping me get through a real breakup. How I did that? I found me. Man, introduced self care into my life, man. Oh, man. What'd you start doing? Meditating? Therapy? What you was doing? Therapy. Therapy. Take care of yourself. Put it me first. Man, it's amazing. Hey, that's a beautiful thing. You know why? Because your, your, your first, last, and best love is always going to be self love, sir. Exactly, man. Man, I really want to get your book, man. I've been trying to get on and get your book. I don't, let me see. I don't think I got no extra. Matter of fact, I'm going to take your info because I might have some copies at the house. All right, man. I want you to add me on Instagram, man. I'm Big Single. I'm out here. Big, Big single. single? That's your name on Instagram? Nah, King underscore Wayne. King underscore Wayne? Yeah, King underscore W A Y N 3. I like Big Single better. Big Single is more catchy. <laughs> My goodness. It's a more catchy Instagram name. Hold Big on, Single. Man. Hello, who's this? Tony, man. What's up, bro? Get it off your chest. Man, I just hate it. It's going to work. Your co-workers give you early morning, man, but 
Oh, you're breaking up. What's up with y'all phones this morning, bro? Hey, look, Major. Talk to you later, man. Santee. You in Santee? Hell yeah. Salute to Santee, man. <laughs> All right, bro. Hold on. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Anthony from Florida. Good morning, the breath. How you guys doing? How you doing, brother? What's up? Get it off your chest. Oh, I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. I'm in a good mood. Um, uh, I just helped my uh, my wife uh, launch her, her first business, and we got our first sale, which is exciting. Um, just real quick, it is Teacher Love Box Official on Instagram, um, and we're just we're, it's targeted teachers, man, and, and we're just trying to trying to bless these teachers because you know they they're hard at work, and uh, you know it's, it's it's serious for them, you know. So, um, but uh, but yeah, so I just I just wanted to say that you know. Hard work pays off, and uh, and also our teacher love box. We do we do a raffle. We do try to give back um, every month. Mm-hmm. It's, it's something free, and it's something way more uh, than what the, the you know uh, the box is is pur- the purchase as. So um, this this month we're giving away just twenty five dollar gift card, um, but we try to do more. So it's exciting. Okay, well, congratulations, that's great. King. Congrats, brother. Get that right, raffle. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a raffle. It's a monthly raffle. Every month, it's on Teacher Love Box Official. Uh, it's the 29th of every month. Um, it's just, you know, something that in, in our hearts, we want to really give back, really, you know, thank them for the hard work they do. You know, so it's cool. All right, brother. Okay. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up. Now we got rumors on the way. Yes, and a lot of activity over the weekend. As you know, the Oscars were last night. We'll discuss that. Also, DMX's funeral and the public one. Not really public, but it was at the Barclays. They had that for friends and family. And then on Sunday, they had one that you could watch on BET. So we'll discuss all of those things this morning. But I think we'll start with the Oscars. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's about time. What's going on? Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is The Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, the Oscars were last night. And, you know, it's a bit different right now with COVID restrictions. People were saying it kind of dragged on. And I saw a lot of chatter on social media about people being upset about Chadwick Boseman not winning. But let's talk about some of the people who were there last night. Regina King was the first presenter. And one of the first things she talked about was a Derek Chauvin trial. Listen to this. We are mourning the loss of so many, and I have to be honest, if things had gone differently this past week in Minneapolis, I might have traded in my heels for marching boots. Now, I know that a lot of you people at home want to reach for your remote when you feel like Hollywood is preaching to you, but as a mother of a black son, I know the fear that so many live with, and no amount of fame or fortune changes that that's right i don't even know why people get upset when folks have those conversations on those platforms that's much uh more more substantive than going up there and just thanking a bunch of people we don't know more what all right substantive what i'm supposed to say that's not the right word definitely in sound sound so uh, i think y'all know what i'm talking about yeah we got you mm-hmm. and now tyler perry was honored with the humanitarian award and amongst the things that he was talking about is refusing hate and how his mom taught him that after he told the story about uh, helping a homeless woman. Listen to this. My mother taught me to refuse hate. And in this time, and with uh, all of the internet and social media and algorithms and everything that wants us to think a certain way, the 24-hour news cycle, it is my hope that all of us would teach our kids, and not only to remember, just refuse hate. Don't hate anybody. I, I refuse to hate someone because they are Mexican or because they are black or white or LBGTQ. I refuse to hate someone because they are a police officer. I refuse to hate someone because they are Asian. Mm. All right, and her also won Fight For You from the Judas and and the Black Messiah soundtrack is the song that won for that for original song. By the way, I loved her outfit, but here is what her speech sounded like. Musicians, filmmakers, I believe we have an opportunity and a responsibility to tell the truth and to to write history the way that it was and and how it connects us um, to today. Knowledge is power, music is power, and as long as I'm standing, I'm always going to fight for us, I'm always going to fight for my people and fight for what's right, and I think that's what music does and that's what storytelling does. Okay, Oscar winner her. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Just about now, to drop Daniel- her debut album, which is so strange to me. Wait, she's dropping her debut. That's what they announced this weekend. She's dropping her debut album. I was like, debut. What was the first one? Maybe like a mixtape or know. EP or something. Like I don't they, know. They, they I don't know nowadays. I definitely don't look at her as dropping her debut album. She got a lot of songs I love. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, let's um, Daniel Kaluuya for Best Supporting Actor. And that is, of course, for Judas and the Black Messiah. And in his speech, he talked about Fred Hampton. To Chairman Fred Hampton, how blessed we are that, that we lived in a lifetime where he existed. Do you understand? Know he was on this earth for 21 years. 21 years. And he found a way to feed kids, educate kids, give free medical care against all the odds. He showed me. He taught me. Him. Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale, the Black Panther Party, they showed me how to love myself. And with that love, they overflowed it to the black community and, and to other communities. And they showed us that the power of union, power of unity, that when they play divide and conquer, we say unite and ascend. Thank you so much for showing me myself. Very well deserved award. He, he deserved every bit of that award. You know, Definitely there was did. a moment that went viral where his mom looked a little bit taken aback. And here's what that moment was like. There's so much work to do, guys, and that's on everyone in this room. This ain't no single man job. That's some real. And I look to everyone, every single one of you. We've got work to do. Do you understand? Know and I'm going to get back to work Tuesday morning because tonight I'm going up. <laughs> we're going up. You know what I mean? We're enjoying ourselves tonight because we've got to celebrate. We've got to celebrate life, man. We're breathing, we're walking. It's incredible. Like, it's incredible. My mom met my dad. They had sex. It's amazing. Like, do you understand? Know I'm here. He's right. Her face was like, boy, if you don't stop. <laughs> he's right, though. His mom met his dad. They had sex, and now he's here. He's like, yeah, we know that's how we got here. Yeah, <laughs> All right, and Two Distant Strangers won an Oscar in the Best Live Action Short Film category, and that stars Joey Badass. And Trayvon Free is um is the person who actually uh, wrote... Did he write this or direct it? He wrote it. Let's see. He wrote it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Trayvon Free wrote it. And Diddy is one of the producers. Terrence J, Van Lathan, Kevin Durant, amongst other people. And um, here is what Trayvon Free had to say. On average, the police in America every day kill three people, which amounts to about a thousand people a year. And those people happen to disproportionately be black people. And, you know, James Baldwin once said, the most despicable thing a person can be is indifferent to other people's pain. And so I just ask that you please not be indifferent please don't be indifferent to our pain i I thought he gave a phenomenal acceptance speech and i have no idea why nobody clapped after he said that not even the black people maybe something was wrong on my tv but i didn't hear any reaction to what he said and i thought what he said was very very accurate and if you Mm -hmm. were upset about what he said then you haven't seen the movie two distant strangers because it's a movie about police violence Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's a really good movie and shout out to joey bass i didn't even really realize when i was watching it at first that that was him i don't know how that's how great of a (laughs) <laughs> At first, I was watching it and I was like, he looks so familiar because the way he was dressed and everything, yeah, it I, just didn't look like Joey Badass to me, which is a great thing. Yeah, salute to my guys on um, Van Lathan and Nick May. They were executive producers on that film. Uh, you know, I watched Terrence I, J. I, Terrence J. Too. Well, I, I see, Jesse Williams, salute Kevin to, Durant. Yeah, salute to Terrence J. and Diddy and all them. But I've been watching Van and Nick and Trayvon get this going from the beginning, way before anybody else was involved. So I'm I'm extremely proud of those three brothers in particular for being Oscar winners now. All right. Well, that is your front page news. I know we have more to talk about, but we'll get into it. All right. We got front page news next. What are we talking about? Yes. And let's talk about Derek Chauvin. Does anybody have any sympathy for him as a human being? We'll discuss. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Our Audible pick of the day is Half Light, a fantastic Atlanta-based story about sisterhood and love from best-selling author Tyeri Jones. Your first 30 days of Audible Plus are free. Sign up at audible.com slash breakfast club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. All right, let's get in some front page news. Where are we starting? Well, let's start with the lead prosecutor, uh, Keith Ellison. And Derek Chauvin's murder trial did admit on 60 Minutes that when the jury came back with the guilty verdict, his reaction was that he felt gratitude, he felt humility, but he also felt a little bit bad. <laughs> Listen when to this. When you first heard the word guilty, you thought what? Gratitude, humility, followed by a certain sense of, I'll say, satisfaction. It's what we were aiming for the whole time. I spent 16 years as a criminal defense lawyer, so I will admit I felt a little bad for the defendant. I think he deserved to be convicted, but he's a human being. 
Yeah, I get what he's saying. I don't agree, but I no. get what he's saying. Like, I like I'll give you an example. I didn't think I would feel empathy or compassion for Eric Holder, the brother who killed Nipsey, but I, I did. When I saw him, I saw a black man who was filled with a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of trauma, and hurt people hurt people. But I don't feel that way towards Derek Chauvin at all. So Not I, at all. Not even I, a little bit. So I, 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 I understand what he's saying a li- tiny bit because I have had compassion and empathy for people I didn't think I would have it for, but I don't see how you Not can have Derek it for Derek Chauvin. Chauvin. Not nah, at all. Nah, 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 nah. Nope. Well, nah. he did expand on what, on what his thoughts were. Listen. Somehow I did not expect to hear from you a note of compassion for Derek Chauvin. I'm not in any way wavering from my responsibility, but I hope we never forget that people who are defendants in our criminal justice system, that they're, they're human beings, they're people. I mean, George Floyd was a human being. And so I'm not going to ever forget that everybody in this process is a person. Yeah, but humans make choices. You know what I'm saying? And humans make good choices and humans make bad choices. And when you make bad choices, you got to deal with the consequences of those bad choices. So it's very hard for me to feel uh, sorry for Derek Chauvin when he did something that evil. Yeah, no, I don't feel sorry for him. But I mean, like I said, I I, I did have I did have find myself having compassion and empathy for, you know, the the, the brother who killed Nipsey just because I I just wouldn't want to hate somebody that much the way I saw that brother hating it. And you know what else was interesting? You know, there was another young man that came forward that he actually did the same thing to for nearly 17 minutes. And they have video of that, too. Did y'all see that? No, no, I'm not. I didn't. From watch the Chauvin video. back in 2017. I read the story though, but I didn't see the video. Mm-hmm. He hit a uh, black teenager in the head so hard the boy needed stitches. Eh. Then he held him down with his knee for nearly 17 minutes, and he was ignoring complaints allegedly from the boy that he couldn't breathe. But you know, Derek Chauvin so, has committed fatal force. He's used fatal force before. He's killed somebody in the line of duty before. Yeah, so for reasons like that, I feel like mm, he oh, just yeah. wasn't feeling like there would any be be any repercussions from this. So, oh yeah, for that, I didn't feel bad for him at all. But I under, I, mm, I don't know, not this. Okay, now we're going to transition into another situation that happened. Authorities in Virginia have released disturbing body camera video of a deputy who was shooting a black man who was holding a cordless phone. And he had just received a ride home by that same law enforcement officer. That is Isaiah Brown, 32. He is alive. He survived more than six rounds fired at him Wednesday. And he's in the hospital fighting for his life. And the deputy has not been named, but he was holding a house phone when he was shot. Uh, What happened was Brown got home. He dialed 911 because he said his brother wouldn't let him into his mother's room to retrieve his car keys and other items. He was on the phone with 911 at the time of the shooting. And the officer mistook a cordless phone for a gun. And I, I read somewhere yes. where the same police officer had given him a ride. Yeah, he gave him a ride. Yes, home. he had given a ride home earlier. The, the same officer uh, is the person that helped him out because I guess his car had broken down, and then he was called and came over there and mm. shot, shot him while he was holding his cell phone. This was I mean, daytime, I right? his phone. This was daytime mm-hmm. too, right? It was around no, it was around two to two two thirty a.m. Oh. that he gave him a ride home, and then he said. Uh, you know, your car is broken down, so why do you need your keys? That's what the dispatcher said to him. It's just another example of how they use, you know, how fatal force is the only option they use for us, and it's just simply unnecessary. It doesn't matter if it's a knife or them mistaking a gun for a phone. It doesn't matter if we unarm, armed, handcuffed, complying, not complying, running, standing. They shoot first and ask questions later. How you just give this brother a ride home? He calls 911. You respond to the same place you just dropped him off at, and you end up killing him, shooting him, ten, shot him 10 times. He's on the phone with the operator. Shot him 10 and, times. Come on, man. Stop. Yeah, and, and he was actually complying with putting his hands up and everything. So, all right, well, we'll keep our eye on this case as well, and that is your front page news. All right. Now, you guys were talking about coffee this morning? Oh, yeah, we talking about coffee. Um... Talking about everything I was that we talking were just about talking health, about. I was talking about the health benefits of coffee this morning. Right. Well, we talking about you, you need a pick me up. This is a pick me up. We got one coming for you. That's right. right. Doctor Umar Johnson, he'll be joining us next, and we'll talk to him in a second. All right, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's EJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The Prince of Pan Africanism. Absolutely, peace and black power. Dr. Glad to be Umar back, Johnson. brothers. What's Welcome this? back. It's the I'm fourth time? Five. five. Okay, this number five. five. Number yes, five. Sir. You know, Dr. Umar, you've become one of the internet's favorite people to meme, man. <laughs> I love it, man. personally. <laughs> I love it. What do you think of it? I don't know. On one hand, 
I appreciate the circulation of the message. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, I think sometimes they go too far to where they're trivializing a very serious message. Talk to me. You know, so okay. I don't want people to lose the centrality and the importance of my main message, which is the liberation of our people. Absolutely. And coming from a school psychologist's perspective, the need for us to make sure we're saving our boys from that school to prison pipeline. Absolutely. And I think sometimes that can get lost in all of the humor. Mm -hmm. So I'm not against it, but I wish it was a little bit more balanced to it. But at the same time, I can't complain because it has helped bring a lot more people to the message and it has helped me save a lot more parents. Absolutely. Now, last time you were up here, we were talking about your school and, and yes. the school that you were open. What's FDMG your Academy. The Frederick Douglass right. Marcus Garvey Academy. It's a bittersweet report, brothers, because let me make it real simple so y'all can understand this. We have two schools, right? They look across the street at one another. The Marcus Garvey building is the elementary school, and the Frederick Douglass building is much larger. It's the high school. Mm -hmm. Now, if you we're focusing on the Garvey building right now, right? If you were to say, how soon can that building be ready? It can be ready in three weeks. We only have three weeks worth of repairs, three weeks worth of HVAC, three weeks worth of electric, three weeks worth of plumbing. Mm -hmm. So if, hypothetically speaking, if a black tradesman, a black HVAC said, I'm going to come volunteer, I'm going to fix the system, you have to pay for all of the materials, but I'm going to donate my time. Mm -hmm. If an electrician, if a plumber said, we're going to donate our time to fix the system, but you have to pay for all the material. The school would be up and running in three weeks. Mm -hmm. That's all we have. Mm -hmm. The problem is, Charlemagne and Envy, is I haven't come across black folks who are willing to donate their time. That's one. Mm -hmm. So we have to raise enough money to pay market rate for those repairs. Mm -hmm. So the HVAC, the bills that I'm getting are ranging from two fifty on up. Uh, the plumbing, the bills I'm getting are ranging from like a buck fifty on up. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. so we have to raise about three hundred thousand dollars just to handle that. Where if we had some black folk who was willing to donate their time, the school would be up and running in three weeks. I wonder if people, if they change their perspective of how they look at this, right? Like you bought the building, but I would look at it like a startup. Outright, we own it, no mortgage. Yeah, I would look at it like it's a startup, and this is what and you're doing. In good shape. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The schools yeah, yeah. are, they're modern, they're not old. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have to do is the plumbing, the electric, and the HVAC. We don't have to do no new construction. Mm -hmm. It's only repair. And that's why it's so frustrating for me, mm -hmm. because it's only three weeks worth of repairs. Not a month, not a year, three weeks worth of repairs in the school could be up and running. So if I were Mexican, the school be done. If I were Chinese, the school be done. Mm -hmm. If I was East Indian, if I was Arab, if I was European Jew, if I was Italian, the school be done. Mm -hmm. It's only because it's us that we don't take something like this as serious. So it's like raising uh, it's like raising money in another round for a startup company. Raising the money in another round for like a startup company. Well, give him, tell him what he sent donations, donations, donations. Well, the donation should go to uh, cash.me slash FDMG school. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the cash app, it's dollar sign FDMG school. If you're PayPal, it's paypal.me slash FDMG academy. Okay. So cash app is FDMG school. PayPal is FDMG academy. They can also mail check a money order. And that information is on my website at drumarjohnson.com. Gotcha. Why, why do you think that, you know, you said if you were Mexican or if you were uh, Asian, why do you think that that black people don't want to support or is not supporting or do you feel that you know you're not getting the support that you should be getting now here's the point and that's a great question envy it's not that black people don't support other black people we are not used to being responsible for building our own institutions mm. are you following mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. if i was opening up a nightclub some sort of a summer a basketball league i would have the support but we are not accustomed to being responsible for building our own institution. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you look around America, can you show me a single independent black community in 50 states? 50 states, you can't show me one black community where we own the hospital, the bank, the school, and the supermarket. So those are the four essential institutions of an independent community. You don't have those four. In any black town, anywhere in the United States, and we are a $2 trillion people. How do you explain that? And I would say slavery, one of the psychological residuals of slavery, it took from us that natural desire to want to control your environment 
and your destiny. Mm -hmm. If you notice when ethnic nationals come to America, the first thing they do is look for where are we going to build our first community. That's the first thing, mm -hmm. because it is natural to want to control your environment. Mm -hmm. It is natural to guarantee your children their future. Black people don't do that. Mm -hmm. when, we get, when we wake up, the first thing we think about is what can I buy to make myself look more important than other black people? Mm -hmm. You see, so our whole orientation towards life is different from other groups as a result of slavery. What's, what's your biggest issue with, with the public schools? My biggest issue with the public schools under the remote learning platform of COVID I got a couple issues. Issue number one, these schools, while our children are learning at home, are still trying to get them tested for special education. Why? If, if he's at home learning through a computer, of course he's not going to be as motivated. That's right. Of course he's not going to do as well because he has to learn through a computer. Children don't learn from computers. They learn from people. If the teacher was boring in the classroom, she's going to be extra boring through the laptop. That's right. So there's a process loss there that public schools are not taking into account, Charlemagne. And as a result of that, they're sending parents letters requesting permission to evaluate your child. Are you are you kidding? No, I I'm telling right. parents you don't sign that. Right. Because even if you sign it, Charlemagne, they get evaluated. School psychologist, which is what I am, comes back and says he has a reading disability. Okay. How are you going to deliver his special ed services if he's at home? If he can't learn through the computer with the regular teacher, what is your special ed program going to offer this boy or girl that's going to rectify that? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So the schools are using this as an opportunity to get paid because every time you put a child in special ed, the school gets more money. So this is just a quick hustle. And I'm telling black parents, hell no. If you want to uh, improve their academics, Bring them back into the classroom because guess what? As much as a lot of children did not like going to school, a lot of them are ready to go back now. They've been home too long. That's right. And even though some school districts have converted to hybrid where they go to class two or three days a week, two or three days at home, a lot of them have not. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing from children on the street, Dr. Umar, I'm ready to go back to school. But there's a discrepancy between white suburban public schools and black inner city public schools. They're showing that amongst the white suburban public and charter schools, 60% of them and greater are back in school. But when you look at the black inner city hood schools, 40% and lower are back in school. You know why? Because the white teachers aren't as motivated to go back into the school and teach the black kids, but they don't have a problem going back into the school to teach the white kids. It's racism. Mm. All right, we got more with Dr. Umar Johnson. When we come back, don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Dr. Umar Johnson. Charlemagne? Let, let's switch gears a little mm -hmm. bit, man, because people feel like we can we can breathe again after the Derek mm -hmm. Chauvin verdict. And, you know, George Floyd's brother said uh, justice for Floyd means freedom for us all. What do, what do you think of that? But Floyd didn't get justice because Floyd isn't coming back from the grave. That's right. And I want everybody to pump the brakes and understand something. No laws have been changed. No laws have been added to hold the police accountable for the unjustified murder of unarmed black people. That's right. So we are right where we were before Chauvin was convicted. And the only reason why he was convicted, to be honest with you, it had nothing to do with black justice. Derek Chauvin was convicted for the same reason O.J. Simpson was acquitted. Now, I don't know if O.J. Simpson was guilty or innocent, but that's irrelevant. The reason O.J. got off in 95 is because the Rodney King riots in 1992 cost Los Angeles County untold millions of dollars in damage. Do you really think they're going to let the city burn down a second time when we haven't done making the repairs from the first riot? It's the same thing in Minnesota. Now, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I don't disagree with that, but that's the same thing Fox News is saying. Fox News is, they're saying that it's because that people were protesting and some people were rioting and looting that the jury was afraid to convict Derek Chauvin. I don't like I don't that because it takes Derek Chauvin afraid. off the hook. Well, most jurors were white. Mm -hmm. You only had four blacks. You had two mixed race. The others was Europeans. Mm -hmm. I don't think the jurors were afraid per se, but I believe that they were very reasonable. And they said to themselves, this city just burned a year ago. Countless millions of dollars in damages that had to be paid out. If we do not convict him, it's going to burn again. And not only is Minnesota going to burn, half the cities in America are prepared for protests. Mm -hmm. And let me be clear, 
they were not concerned about the black protesters. The black protesters did not break the law. Mm -mm. They were concerned of the white anarchist groups and the white militia groups who were going to operate under the cover of the black protester mm -hmm. to destroy infrastructure mm -hmm. and damage property. That's right. So they That's were right. not afraid of black people protesting. They were afraid of the white anarchist groups. That's why he got convicted, mm -hmm. because they didn't want to flip that price tag. It was not about black justice. It was white capitalism that convicted Chauvin. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that at all. But only, the only thing I push back on with that is the fact that I don't want people to think that what Derek Chauvin did wasn't wrong. Because you no, saw it was wrong. It was, exactly. it was absolutely exactly. wrong. And here's what makes the case so pathetic. The whole world saw what happened. Indisputable. And yet everybody still was on pins and needles. That's right. To see if he would be held accountable. That's right. And then you heard the judge tell him and his attorney that because of the comments that Queen Mother Representative Maxine Waters made, you may have grounds to appeal the case. Well, first of all, he can appeal the case anyway. But why did the judge have to remind him that you have the opportunity here to appeal the case? And because he doesn't have a, a record under Minnesota law. Derek Chauvin could do as little as 12 and a half years and be home to enjoy the rest of his life. But here's a point I want you gentlemen to recognize. I want to go to President Biden. President Biden, your first day of office, you signed an executive order to protect the life and safety of transgenders. I have no problem with that. But you did it on your first day. But he sat up here with you, Charlemagne and told black people that if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. So if you went out of your way begging black people to vote for you, why haven't we got an executive order or any other activity coming out of the Oval Office from President Biden to protect black people from police? Look what he's doing with the anti-Asian hate. President Joe Biden signed an executive order that is exclusive to Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. I don't have a problem with that. But if you can protect the Asian American and Pacific Islander from violence, why can't you do the same thing for black people? They've been dealing with violence for one year as a result of COVID. That's what it's called, the COVID-19 hate crimes bill mm -hmm. to protect Asians as a result of discriminatory treatment that they've been dealing with for how long? One year. Black people have been catching hell for four Hundred years, and we have yet to get an executive order from Joe Biden to protect us from the police, and also Charlemagne and Envy, to further highlight the racism of American government. The transgender executive order is not for people of color. It is not for minorities. It is not for disadvantaged communities. Guess who it's for? Transgender. The anti-Asian Pacific Islander hate uh, executive order against hate is not for people of color, it's not for minorities, it's not for disadvantaged Americans. It is exclusively and only for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Why am I bringing that up? Because when Barack Obama was in office, all these Negroes running around screaming for Obama, I still don't know why, was said that Barack Obama can't do nothing specifically for black people because this is America. So if you have to make laws for all Americans, Charlemagne and Envy, how do you explain the fact that the Asian Americans got a law just for them? Yesterday, the United States Senate, in historic precedence, passed the anti-Asian hate crimes bill at a vote of 96 to 1. And why are they catering to the Asians? You know why? Because the amount of white people in this country is shrinking. That's right. And whenever the amount of white people in America shrinks, America looks to find other white groups or other minority groups that they can build an alliance with to protect their power and their interests. Who better than the Asians? They're just as conservative politically as many middle class white Americans. They are just as economically comfortable as many middle class white Americans. They don't like black people just as much as many middle class white Americans, not to mention that this can go a long way towards building relationships with Asian countries on the continent of Asia that America can't afford to build an alliance with Russia. Let us be clear about something. The continent of Asia is a big problem for the U.S. government. You got three power nations on that continent. You got Russia that America can't stand. You got China that America can't control. And you got India which is one of the fastest growing populations, and it is quickly becoming the IT giant of the world. 
Kamala Harris is not the vice president by accident. Kamala Harris is the vice president on purpose because America needed to send the nation of India an olive branch to improve their relations because America can't afford for India to get tight with China or Russia. This is politics. And they're going to use the Asians, okay, as probationary whites. They're going to upgrade them to probationary white status to make sure that they stay on the side of the white man and not go on the side of the black man. And don't forget about the George Floyd Policing Act. Oh, that still hasn't passed yet. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But you pass some bills for everybody else, but nothing for black people. And part of this is our fault because we didn't make no demands on Joe Biden before he got elected. Yeah, I, I do disagree. A lot of people made demands of Biden, but then you had other people saying... No, 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 no. Not people, Charlemagne, as a community. Well, that's, 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 make... that's hard, though, because black, black, black people aren't monolithic. We can never we get on the same be page. Because, 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 Asians aren't monolithic, but they can still organize but, and put a platform out. Very true, but to my point, you had people that were putting platforms out, but then but you, you had but you had other people saying, no, we got to get Trump out. Don't rock the boat right now. Well, problem, Wait until Biden gets in and then make demands. Right, but the problem we made as a community is we made Donald Trump the scapegoat for racism. Just like mm. we made Barack Obama the angel, you understand, for government, we made Donald Trump the devil. You don't do either one of those. The U.S. government is a system. It's not a person. So when you make Donald Trump the scapegoat for all of American racism, you let the government off the hook. You don't reduce a system as powerful as this to an individual or a personality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The problem, which, I, which is what I think you're saying, so we don't disagree on this point, we are disorganized. And it is the disorganization that makes it difficult for us to put forward a unified platform. Mm -hmm. So what happens is people are self-anointing themselves as the representatives of black people. That's why I do not vote for black people who are registered as Democrats or Republicans. I only vote for ind independent candidates. Because if you are not an independent candidate, you don't have an independent program, you are not an independent thinker, and you ain't going to bring us no independent freedom. The Democrats are a waste of time. If the Congressional Black Caucus can't make Joe Biden do anything for black people, then they need to dissolve themselves. We don't even need them anymore. They're useless. All right, we got more with Dr. Umar Johnson. When we come back, don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Dr. Umar Johnson. Charlamagne? Do, do you believe there is any policy or legislation that will stop police executions of black people? Like, you think, like, if they implement the George Floyd Policing Act, will it stop the, I have the, the to executions of black at people? I have that act. Mm -hmm. But my suspicions are it doesn't really have any teeth in it, mm -hmm. because when I look at the act that Nancy Pelosi introduced, the police reform bill, right around the time that the George Floyd riots kicked off, it didn't have no teeth in it. Number one, it is a hate crime. These police killing us are committing hate crimes and nobody is treating them like hate crimes. So the first change in the legislation is that it all has to be treated as a hate crime. Second change in the legislation the civil suit payouts come from the police officer's pension, pension yeah. and it comes from the police union and it comes from the fraternal order of the police. Make them pay because you can't tell me that you're going to make black taxpayers pay. You understand for the criminal behavior of police. How am I getting a victory if I'm the one who has to pay for his mistakes? Uh-uh. Make the police pay and charge every murder as a hate crime, and I guarantee you they'll think twice before they start killing black yeah, folks. Yeah, in the George Floyd Policing Act, uh, that's what they want to do. They want to get rid of qualified immunity. Because if you get rid of qualified immunity, then that's exactly what will happen. Exactly. You yeah. need to get rid of qualified immunity mm -hmm. and stop making police think that their lives are more important than black folks. Look at the situation with the sister. Who got shot the five times? Now let's four, talk about that. Makaya Bryant in Ohio. Makaya Bryant. Yeah. They're claiming, and she the one who called the police. Mm -hmm. They're claiming that the police had a right to shoot her. Even coons, Negroes are running around saying, well, she had a knife. So that justifies her being killed? Because I work in school, Charlemagne. I have seen lunchroom aides. Dis with no police training, mm -hmm. no bulletproof vest, no nightproof vest, no gun in their pocket. I have seen elderly black women and elderly black men take knives and other weapons out of the hands of students during lunchroom riots. So you mean to tell me that a 60, 70 year old man can disarm a teenager in a lunchroom, but a trained armed police with a bulletproof vest can't get a knife out of the hand of a 16 year old, but yet and still you have white males who are conducting mass murders all across this country almost every other week 
We're getting a mass murder in America in almost every one of these fully armed, fully violent, murderous white men were apprehended by the police without being shot and without losing their life. So explain to me how a white man with an AK-47 can be taken without a police officer firing a bullet after he done murdered six, seven, eight people, but a 16-year-old girl with a butter knife cannot be apprehended without a bullet being shot. That is nonsense. They killed her because they knew they would get away with it. I'm not gonna lie. I must be a coon because I, I don't agree with you on this one, and I'm gonna tell you why. I, now, agree I do with you. agree with you. I do agree with you. Those people that walk, walk around with the assault rifles and those and those white boys that they run around that don't get shot, they should get shot immediately. You come out with a gun, should lay your ass down. Not even a question asked. Yes. But this situation, my only thing is this: when the police pulled up, now you're talking to somebody whose father's a retired cop, right? Yes, sir. And when that cop pulled up. He doesn't know friend or foe. He doesn't know who called the police, right? Okay. He, he does not know. He does, it, it wasn't like Understood. a sign. Hey, I called the police. Understood. He got a, they got a call. Hey, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm getting jumped. Somebody has a weapon, right? Okay. Comes out that car. He, he puts his hand out. First thing he says is, you see that girl running towards the other girl with the knife up. Okay. Right? Police can use deadly weapon to two things, to defend himself and defend another person. Okay. He fired his firearm, stopping that girl from getting shot. Now, people could say four times, five times was a lot. That was a lot of shots. But his whole thing was to disarm that girl. And at first, I was upset. Why the f*** they shooting that woman? But then I had to sit back and say, let's say that was my daughter sitting on the back of that car and somebody was coming at her aggressively with a knife. She wasn't uh -huh. defending herself. Well, she was That's defending herself, though, Amy. You can't do that. Right, I mean, they, they, came, jump. they, had, they jumped her before, and they came to her right, house. That was her property. But at this point right here, when I, I'm telling you what the cops seen. Mm -hmm. The cop didn't see the fight. Okay. The cop okay. only seen was the girl being aggressive to the other girl. That's all he seen. Okay. So at that point, if I'm the father and that's my daughter, I would want to make sure my daughter didn't get stabbed. Okay. And that was the only reason I said I understand why that cop did that but shit. But she shouldn't be dead. But, Let me ask you yes, a question. Sir. If yes, you are the police. Correct. DJ Envy is the police officer. You get out the car. You saw the exact same set of circumstances. Do you shoot her five times? Why or why not? I am not going to shoot her five times. Why? Because this, this is my community, and I know what happens in the community. I understand the fight. In I other words, you value her, I, her life. Right, but I'm going to tell you why. Exactly. And, and, this, and, this is and gonna he be a little took her life too, because he did not value it. Right. Let me I ask you another question, Envy. If she was a white girl with that same knife... Does she get shot five times? If I'm a police officer? That white, if that, well, not you, with the white, going back to the white officer. If, a, if the girl see, with the knife was a white girl and that was a white neighborhood, does she get shot at all by no. that same cop? No, gun never I even comes out. So. I would hope so. If she's aggressive. No, 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 I didn't ask you what you hope. hope. <laughs> I didn't I ask you what you hope. Does I mean, that I same know. white I'm cop You know it would not with a knife, Envy? I don't know, I'm not a psychic. Envy, you know it, you know she wouldn't. Envy, you know she wouldn't have got shot if she was white. I would, I would hope so. If if uh, if anybody is aggressively going at somebody with a knife, I would hope that they Envy, get shot. How many? Video, yo, they got a video of a of a white guy stabbing a cop in the neck. The cop goes, oh, "I'm stabbed in the neck." He pulls out his gun, chases the guy, stops in the middle of the chase to pull out his taser to tase the white Absolutely. guy. Absolutely. Come on. The point that I'm trying to make that guy Envy, immediately too. And you said what? it yourself, Envy. You said they're trained where they can shoot. They're not required to shoot. In other words, police are expected to exercise discretion like any other professional. He made a decision. And when you look at the video, I didn't hear him say stop. I didn't hear him say drop it. If I'm not mistaken. He did. He did. He did. He did do that. He did do that. He did? Yeah, he did. Because I did. didn't see it on Eric. He, he did. But even he did. if he did. And she said, and she said, I'm going to stab the f out of you. So, like I'm saying. So, why ain't case, shoot her in the leg? In that case, you know, you're right, but they're not trained to do that. Like, it, it seems something. It's a bigger If she than was just white, she would not have been I shot at all. So you can't blame it on the training, Envy. This was racism. I posted a video yesterday. This was racism. I posted a but video yesterday of a white let me man. Ask the question. If she didn't shoot her, uh -huh. and that girl would have stabbed that girl and killed that girl, what would everybody would have said? The cop didn't do anything. I'm going to argue that it would have been impossible for her to kill the girl because the police, who are athletically fit, could have engaged her in less than five seconds. He could have tackled her. He, he could have tased her. her hit her with rubber bullets. She would have been stabbed by this. She, stabbed by this. she was already in motion. She no, man. She already no, nah, she, she knocked nah, down, she knocked nah. down one girl before she got to the girl in the pink. Cop was right there the whole time.
So the cop watched her knock down one girl and then go to the next girl in the pink. He could have intervened anytime. So the point that we're making is not that these situations aren't tense. It's not that they're not dangerous. It's not that the police are not stressed out. We're saying because white people in America have historically and systemically devalued black life, it has created a context where it is justifiable to kill for police to kill black people even when we are innocent. That's the point that we're making. Yeah, fatal force is always the option when it comes to black people. Always the option. All right, we're talking to Dr. Umar Johnson. Now, last time you came up here, you got a lot of flack. Over what? What was it? What was it over? What what issue? Your opinions changed. You were saying that uh, you feel that black men shouldn't or black women shouldn't date outside of their race. Did you not hear the Anthony Thompson Jr. situation? Thank you. I was going to go back to that, Envy. Anthony Thompson Jr. is dead because now his girlfriend was mixed race, so she was African. But the mother was white. He's dead because his girlfriend had a white mother. Dating outside your race is dangerous. If you don't believe me, look at Deshaun Watson down in uh in uh Houston, Houston Texans. Most yep. of those massage girls were white. Let me ask you a question, Dr. Umar. Are you totally against interracial relationships? I am totally against it, and I want to make sure you understand why. Mm-hmm. It's not because... <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out, Envy. <laughs> Cut it out, Envy. Don't do that, Envy. I'm, I'm having a serious fact, conversation. We have a name for it. I, I want... We have a name for it. Okay. The snow bunny crisis. Okay. I am against the snow bunny crisis. And I want your white listeners to understand. Because people be trying to say stuff like, uh, he's the black Hitler. I'm not the black Hitler. I am I am in no way interested in hurting or harming the life of any human, white, Asian, Chinese. I believe in respecting everybody. Mm-hmm. The reason I'm against interracial marriage in and Charlemagne is because marriage is an economic contract. It's an economic contract. Most women do not marry down in status. They marry up. And if you don't believe me, show me a rich white woman married to a broke ass black man. Have you ever seen a rich white woman marry a broke-ass black man? No, you have not, and you never will. Because marriage ain't about love, it's not colorblind, and it is totally economic. So, if most women will marry a man of greater economic means, and women generally live longer than men, when a black man dies, his entire estate goes to a non-African woman and she is free to do whatever she wants with your black money because you're no longer around to control how it gets spent. We, we, it's not about hate. It's about loving black people. We we, we about to close out because Envy got to go. But I do want to mm-hmm. ask you, you said that, you know, marriage is not about love. So when it comes to same sex relations, it's not about love. When it comes to interracial, it's not about love. And if you think it's about love, have you ever went into a divorce court and saw people argue? about getting their love back. Oh, Have good. you ever seen somebody but, say, I want half my love back? <laughs> Have you ever seen DJ Andy? You ever been in divorce court and see somebody say, I gave him 20 years of love. I want half my love back. I ain't never seen nobody go to divorce court to get their love back. They go to divorce court to get money, property, assets, 401ks, and everything else. So when we, when we see you What's on... What's love got to do with it? When we see you on social media asking for a queen... I'm not asking for a queen. I'm letting the queens know that I have not chosen my queen. And if you think that you have what it takes to stand by the Prince of Pan-Africanism, I would like to know who you are because I'm so busy. I can't meet every woman. I'm too busy. But you choose so, it for business. Not like You're not trying oh, to... Oh, I'm choosing for business. Her head better be nappy. Her whole body better be natural. That's right. Her head better be nappy. Happy to be nappy. No weave, no perm, no straightening, no blonde hair. Listen, I opened up a revolutionary academy. The Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. We trying to change the consciousness of African children. How the hell I'm going to be the lead of a pan-African institution and my wife got a blind weave in her damn head? Mm. What does that say about me? Show me who you love and I'll tell you who you are. <laughs> Give me your Twitters and Instagrams too, Dr. Twitter Umar. and Instagram at Dr. Umar Johnson. Facebook at Dr. Umar Ifatunde. Email D-R-U-M-A-R Johnson as Dr. Umar Johnson at Yahoo.com. And phone number 8444-DR-UMAR. That's 8444-D-R-U-M-A-R. Dr. Umar Johnson, add him. Don't add me. Don't add Envy. Don't add Breakfast Club. You got all his Twitters and Instagrams. <laughs> Talk to him if you got uh, issues with anything he said. Black African power. That's right. Dr. Umar Johnson, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's time, time, time. She's spilling the tea. This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on the Breakfast Club. 
Well, DMX's memorial service was inside the Barclays Center in Brooklyn on Saturday. And as you know, April 9th, DMX passed away. He was 50 years old at White Plains Hospital. He suffered from a heart attack and he was on life support and in a coma. And so let's talk about what happened at this. It was a lot. And let me tell you something. Watching his children try to speak. That was so difficult to even see. But Swizz Beats, of course, spoke, and he encouraged everybody to do their will. Things that I'm witnessing from my brother's passing, a lot of people ain't your friends, a lot of people ain't your family. And I need everybody to do a will. You have to do your will. You do not want strangers, bloodsuckers, handling your business when you're not here. You want the ones that you love handling your business. But I'm going to make sure my brother's straight. I'm going to make sure my brother family's straight, my brother kids are straight, and everybody in here better do the same as well. Yeah, right. some, yeah somebody, knew, somebody received that message. Yeah, no, <laughs> somebody knew right. exactly who Swiss was talking to in that moment. Now that we all right. should make sure you have a will and a life insurance policy, and the younger you get it, the, the cheaper it is. That If anything ever happens, you know that your family's taken care of. They don't have to worry about that bill. They can just you know focus on grieving. Now, Kanye, of course, and we've discussed this, was doing Sunday service. And DMX participated in Sunday service previously. Mm -hmm. So, and, and by the way, Kanye also did these uh, Balenciaga shirts, a collaboration for DMX, which raised a million dollars for the family also. Oh. And so DMX's daughter did a song and she actually, it sounds like it was a version of Slipping for Herself, but she's an artist also. She's 12 years old. Sonoba Jr. here is her performing. Yo, know, my dad taught me to be strong. I learned so much from him. So I dedicate this song to him. Ayo, hey, I'm growing, I'm learning to hold my head up. Ayo, hey, I'm growing, I'm learning to hold my head up. Ayo, hey, I'm growing, I'm learning to hold my head up. My daddy's still holding my hand, so I gotta stand up. She did three verses of that song, memorized it. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. So dope, so cute. That, that young lady has a lot of talent. A lot of time. I know he'd be super proud Absolutely. of that. Now, Tashera Simmons, his ex-wife, and his fiance also shared a really nice moment and hugged each other on the stage. But she loved that man. And that's why I loved you. So when she comes up... Yeah, what, what, what Tashera said, it, it, it made me and my wife tear as we were watching it, just talking about their history and how they started and all that. And wow, it, it was... It was a, it was a tear jerk. I don't know I don't know if a lot of you guys see. I just want to say one thing. Yeah, I know you're doing your report. She said mm -hmm. that uh, Dmx cha uh, trained his dog. Now this is so left, but I just thought this was genius. He trained his dog to steal pocketbooks, so he would tell the dog something, and the dog would grab the pocketbook and run off. And that's the first time she met him, so that's why she told the story. But I'm like. Mm. Goodness gracious. Most I heard that story before, though. Like he, used, he used to rob people with the dog. Mad people in Yonkers used to say that. Yeah, yeah but I would say with the dog, I thought it was, I got my dog with me. I didn't know he was like, get him, and Boomer would grab the bag and run. I'm like, most people can't train their dog to potty train and to go to the bathroom outside. Like, that's crazy. All right, well, DMX's fiance also uh, spoke at the memorial service. I never thought that our story would end as suddenly as it has. But it's filled with pages upon pages of memories and kept alive within my heart. Now, so now, I thank you, Earl. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the journey. Thank you for Exodus and his siblings. Thank you for the story of us. And thank you, God, for Earl Simmons forever X. Wow. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. And of course, all the Rough Riders is on stage. Mm -hmm. Rough Riders co-founders, Y&D, were the last ones to speak during the service. Um, they everybody were? was there. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. I saw, they people, were I, I saw people speak uh, after Y&D. Tashera spoke after Y&D. And the other fiance, Des uh, what yeah. was her name? Desiree. Desiree. Yeah. yeah. They were the last to speak at the ball place, not at the church. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Uh, Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. All right. Thank you, Miss Yee. Charlamagne, who are you giving that donkey to? You know, we need a woman named Michelle Stillwell to come to the front of the congregation. Uh, we would like to have a word with her. Okay. And if you look tasty, you might want to tuck your cheeks. We'll talk about it. All right. We'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Peace to the planet. Charlamagne the God here. This year has been tough on mental health. Gentle Mind is here to help. 
Genomind has developed an innovative new tool for groundbreaking insights into your unique genetic predispositions. Go to mentalhealthmap.com to be empowered on your mental health and well-being. Make sure you tell them to watch out for Florida, man. Florida, man. The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. Yes, you are a donkey. A Florida man attacked an ATM for a very strange reason. It gave him too much money. Florida man is arrested after deputies say he rigged the door to his home in an attempt to electrocute his pregnant wife. Police arrested an Orlando man for attacking a flamingo. To the breakfast club, bitches. Donkey of the day. With Charlemagne the God. I don't know why y'all keep letting him get y'all like this. Well, Donkey of the Day for Monday, April 26th goes to Michelle Stilwell. She's 55 years old and she hails from the great state of Florida. What does your Uncle Charla always tell you about Florida? The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. And Michelle Stilwell proves my point now. Michelle Stilwell was in Florida. And she decided to call an Uber to run some errands. In fact, her daughter called the Uber for her mom. OK, and she asked the Uber driver, whose name is Michael Hasty Jr., to take care of her mother. Well, little did Michael know he's the one who was going to uh, <laughs> need to be taken care of. Let's go to WFL a NBC 8 for the report, please. There is new video tonight of a disturbing weekend attack on a local Uber driver. Yeah, the driver says he was scratched, strangled and bitten by his passenger. And now he wants to know what Uber is doing to keep drivers like him safe. We spoke with a man who says he's Michelle Stillwell's husband. He claims his wife doesn't remember anything about the attack, including taking a chunk out of the driver's neck. I'm just your Uber driver. I'm just your Uber driver. Stop! Michael Hassey says he thought he was going to die. It was hands down the most traumatizing thing that's ever happened to me. Hassey was working as an Uber driver when his passenger turned on him. Police quickly arrested the passenger, 55-year-old Michelle Stillwell. The police report says Stillwell could have been drunk. Hassey says Stillwell's daughter called the Uber for her mom. He says she slept most of the ride before violently waking up blocks from her home. Woke up hungry. Now, your Uncle Charlotte, Brother Lenard, I get on this radio all the time, and I tell you, all we want to do every day of our lives is avoid crazy. That's all we're attempting to do, ladies and gentlemen. Avoid crazy. But sadly, sometimes crazy finds us, comes right to our front door in this situation right in your back seat. This is why I could never be an Uber driver. Drop on the clues bombs for all the Uber drivers out there. Man, the reason I could never be an Uber driver is because you are forced to interact with a bunch of different energies throughout the day and night. Some of those energies are friendly. Some of those energies are Michelle Stillwell. I'm just trying to get you from point A to point B, and now I'm a snack. Okay, not even the kind of snack I want to be because it is spring and summertime. And if you've been working out, you're feeling handsome. Okay, you wouldn't mind someone jumping in your car, calling you a snack. But tell me I'm a snack. Don't show me with your mouth. Well, actually, it, it, it's okay to show someone with your mouth if you think they're a snack. Just not like the way Michelle Stillwell did. Okay, would you like to hear how the buffet was sounding in the car? Listen. You don't get uh, uh, hey, do you have the cops on the way? Uh, 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 Call the cops. I don't want to jump out with this. Oh. Jump out the car, man. I don't want to jump out. I don't want to. I don't want to get out now for a run. You. You. I can't breathe. You. I can't breathe. Imagine how she sounds at dinner. She probably eats with her mouth open. Yuck. She probably orders her steak rare, eats it with no utensils, just picks it up and bites into it. Look, Michelle was charged with two felony charges of aggravated battery and tampering with a witness. And she could have been drunk or she could have been hungry or she could have been a flesh eating day walking zombie. Maybe she was a vampire. Maybe we are looking for all these reasons why she did what she did to that Uber driver. When the reality is the only logical reason for her behavior is one word, two syllables, and that's Florida. Is Florida two syllables? Three, Three right? Three. Florida. Florida. Okay. <clears throat> When the reality is the only logical reason for her behavior is one word, three syllables, and that's flow right duh. Please give Michelle Stillman the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you are the donkey mm. of the day. Ooh, ooh, you are the donkey of the day. 
Now, we sure Florida is three syllables. Florida. Florida. That's how I thought it was Florida. Florida. No, what? No. Florida. Not Florida. Florida. It's not Florida. Who says the ruh? Ruh. I ain't never heard nobody say Florida. 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 I never heard nobody say that. Do you not spell Florida? I know the I know the rapper Florida. Well, let's, let's ask the English major, ye. Florida. <laughs> yes, it should be Florida. Three. Florida. Three. Florida. 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 All right. <laughs> Florida. A lot of people just say Florida. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Low, 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 low. All right. I'm mad we didn't play a game, but okay. All right. You want to play a game? You, you don't want to play a game. Come on. You know what race this was. You don't think so? Let's play a game. All right. We, we've seen silence. <laughs> Let's play a game, then. It's time for a game of Guess <laughs> What Race It Is! I didn't think that this needed a game of Guess What Race It Is, but Envy wants to play. Michelle Stillwell, 55 years old, gets in the backseat of an Uber, wakes up after 20 minutes of sleep, and takes a bite out of the Uber driver's face. Guess What Race It Is! Ye. Uh, well, you heard me already. I've seen Silence of the Lambs, so I'm going to say Caucasian. Okay. All right, DJ Envy, Michelle Stillwell yes. gets in the backseat of an Uber. Mm. Okay, sleeps for 20 minutes, wakes up and takes a bite out of the Uber driver's face. Guess what race she is? I'm going with white. Okay. Well, you both are correct. Caucasian is the correct answer. So. Now, uh, earlier last hour, Dr. Umar Johnson, he uh, was here. He, we were doing an interview, and the phone lines lit up. People had some things to say. So let's open up the phone lines. Let's talk. Let's have a discussion. What were your thoughts? What do you think? Huh? What's on your mind after hearing him, hearing the good brother speak? 800-585-1051. Call us up right now. Phone lines are wide open again. 800-585-1051. Let's talk. Mr. Breakfast Club, good morning. All right, pull out your, pull out your phone. Call in right now. You call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Break, break, break it down. 800-585-1051. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Pick up the phone, baby. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, Dr. Umar Johnson uh, stopped through. He was here uh, last hour, and he was talking about a lot. A lot of different things. I mean, everything from, you know, interracial relationships to, you know, how we can hold police officers accountable for, you know, the, 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 the disproportionate amount of black people who get killed at the hands of the police. He sparks conversation. That's what Dr. Umar does. You know, Dr. Umar to me is like anybody else. Some things I agree with, some things I don't agree with, some mm -hmm. things I don't know anything about. Right. You know what I mean? And and the things I don't know anything about, I go I go I go and research to mm -hmm. see if, you know, to see if he's in the right ballpark with these things. You know. But, All right. So so let's open up the phone lines and get people's opinions. 800-585-1051. One thing I do know about Dr. Umar though. What's that? He absolutely cares about the liberation of black people. Period. Hello, who's this? Brian. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Good morning. What's going on? Good morning. How you doing? Good, good, good. What, what did you think about Dr. Umar's interview? What were your thoughts, man? Uh, uh, it was crazy because I think uh, uh, where we are right now in America, we have to fight. We have to fight civil rights and everything that's going on. However, I think it's detrimental to us in our community when we have people when we defend the wrong, when we would defend the wrong ideas and the wrong tactics and the things that fight against us. This situation with this young girl, when I first seen it, I was, it, it bugged me out. But much like you said, I thought, the first thing I thought about was, wait, if that girl in the pink was my daughter and she was allowed to be stabbed and it was, it was caught on camera and the cop did nothing, what would we do? Would it be such an outroar? And, and, and an uproar for for what happened on that end, as much as as much as it is on this end, and everybody defending the fact, oh, the cop shouldn't have shot us, the cop shouldn't have did this, the cop did his job. 
I don't think I don't think nobody's saying the cops shouldn't have intervened. We're just simply saying that young girl shouldn't have been killed tonight. And when you when you watch the police killings of, of, of black people in America, you can't look at these things on a case by case basis because it's clearly a system that allows them to use fatal force against us more often than not. That's just the yeah, truth. Yeah, black people get killed, white but, people get apprehended. Yes. No, no, but but no, no okay. Okay, we can we can argue we can argue uh, against that. However, when it's when it's the officer doing what he's supposed to do. Now, h- however, remember, now, what, my brother, y'all y'all, y'all y'all keep saying that, but yo, Michael Brown was legally justified. No, Trayvon no, Martin no, was man. legally justified. No, man, Tamir you, Rice was no, legally justified. All of that no, stuff but, is legally justified. No, That's why laws have to be changed. No, but but check this out. No, I agree with that. But hold on, Charlamagne, you ask why couldn't he shoot in the leg? You know why cops don't shoot in the leg or shoot from the arm? Because they're not trained to. No, 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 no. They stopped that training years ago because if they miss and shoot somebody else, then that's another lawsuit. And you put yourself in a different predicament. So at this point in time, what cops do is they shoot for the biggest part of the body. Which is the chest. Right. No, I, I absolutely agree. Now, it was a tragedy that the girl, that, that young lady lost her life. Absolutely. What? The young girl should not be dead this morning. Job. And in all the cases, we could talk about so many different cases where the cops abused their power and killed uh, black people and killed minorities. But in this one, they weren't wrong. Y'all keep opinion. saying that, but 90 opinion, 90% of wrong. these cases are legally justified. The reason Darren right. Wilson got off is because it was legally justified to kill Michael right. Brown. Yeah, I mean, the, the reason George Zimmerman, Zimmerman got, got off because yes. it was legally those, justified those to kill Trayvon. Those, those were wrong. wrong. In my opinion, this one wasn't wrong. wrong. You say what? It's just difficult because you see white people all the time committing crimes and doing things like that, and they're not cops. Don't fear them like they fear black people. By by, by the way, like their lives. Not not only is Angela E. correct, but there's statistics that prove it. Black people get killed at three times, in some places five times the rate of white people. All that is wrong, (laughs) but in this case. That officer was right. All that you said, that you're absolutely right. Look. That is you, all you wrong. Y'all, y'all, not, y- y'all, y'all not making like, how many, how many times? How many times do you feel like if I was white, that wouldn't have happened to me? If I was white, the cops That's wouldn't it. harass me. If it's, I was white, okay. they wouldn't have followed okay. me around the store. Now, now, what? Why can't? Why can't we attack the fact that all this, the social media, social media? Every time you turn on social media, what is it? It's our culture. It's our culture out there. Yo, let's get back. Our culture doing what? what our culture is, is, is depicted on, on social media as the ratchet ones and all this. And, and so that's that, to, that. So police no, should no, kill no, us let, because let, of let that. Finish, let me finish. Let me finish my conversation. I said you have cops that come into our community. Yes, they do not live in our community. But if you sit down and you watch social media for a week and look at how black people are are, are, are shown on social media, and then you go into these neighborhoods, you think, it, "Oh, listen, this is what I'm dealing with." Well, you, hey, 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 my brother, let me ask you a question. And this is all in historical context. We have seen the white colonizer murder, pillage, and rape all over the world. But yet he got us thinking we the villain. Why we don't look no, at them like that? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say, the, I didn't say we the villain. I said it's the way that we're shown. The way that we're shown. That we We've watched our- hundreds and hundreds of years of colonization, murderous colonization from and, from and, white folks. But thank you, brother. If you go back, if you want to go back in history, every time they show us, let's think about Tarzan. How do they show black people? You're not let's listening to what I'm saying. We have watched hundreds and hundreds of years of pillaging, of colonization, of murder, of rape. All it is from one sector of a community on this planet and we don't look at them like that yeah yeah absolutely so how they gonna look at us like that because of instagram absolutely positively <laughs> right, like god said. damn and some of those cases that you name when you talk about uh, trayvon martin and legally justified even though but those, those were wrong they were wrong this, this one, one was wrong this one was he was not wrong man. Hey, man he was not wrong he he saved that girl's life in the pink that's what he did he saved that girl's life and it got to the point we talk about what's right or wrong Can, you know how you know how many adults were there watching those do, watching those, i agree watching but envy guess what you make your whole point null and void when you say because you said it already what's that if that was a white girl that wouldn't have happened i don't know if it was a, I, I don't know I don't, you I, said I, it wouldn't honestly, have huh? during the black Numa interview you said yeah, if she was I, white I said, that wouldn't I, happen i don't know maybe it would maybe it wouldn't but all we I know do it know, wouldn't though because we know because statistics show that black people are killed life. at five times the rate of white people right but we could talk about all these statistics right <laughs> y'all look but, crazy. When, when you're talking about this particular case no and i love i love there's no such thing as a particular case instagram attorneys and say oh he should have shot him in the leg 
You know how hard it is to shoot somebody in the leg where they running? Indeed. Or they should have shot him in the hand and the knife would have flew out. Yes. You guys be, watch too much movies. Being that, a police officer is very hard. That's but we got to stop saying these things are a case-by-case basis but because it's a, a case system. By case no, it's not. Yeah, a lot of the cases wrong. System. This one wasn't wrong. And oh, if he God. didn't shoot the girl, no, it's not. and that girl would have stabbed the girl in, in the pit. So why is Isaiah Brown dead this morning? Then they would have said... How come they didn't Why stop is Isaiah him? Brown in Virginia dead this morning? Why'd he get shoot t- shot 10 times? Every case is different. No, it's not when it yes, comes it to black is. people. Every case is different. <laughs> no, it's not. The, every case is different. Oh, God. All right. Every case is different. Okay. You can't I say, concede. well, I, you can't. Okay. But listen, you guys, I, I know it's a. I, I just want to intervene for a second. I just want to say, I know this is a very passionate topic for all of us, but the truth is that when white people do things like this, they don't get killed, they don't get shot. And we've seen it happen where they run over protesters, where different things happen, where they pull, I, we've seen people pull guns they just made on it cops on... and attack them and they, white people, and they don't even get shot when that would be justified. All I know is if that was my daughter and she was about to get stabbed like that, I want, I would want anybody to stop any threat of my daughter getting Listen stabbed. Listen to what you said though. Mind. You said you want to stop. That don't mean you gotta kill them. Right, but they, intervene. But, you don't have to kill them. Kill they, they don't shoot to injure. They're not gonna shoot your pinky toe. No, they don't no. shoot black they people don't. to injure. But let's talk about it. Eight hundred five. But think about if that was your daughter that got killed, you wouldn't have wanted that to happen nope. either, right? If you my daughter was to, chasing somebody, it's just hard. Aggr- listen, and I'm. This is so so real and so honest. If my daughter was chasing somebody aggressively with a knife, about to kill somebody, and a cop pulled up and shot her to stop it, I would understand. Even if the girl came, to, even if the, right, even if the girl understand. came to your daughter's house to fight her, right? But the, this is the problem. The problem is the cop does not know that when he pulls up. The you cop don't care, cop envy, because and I, she's and you black. Know what I tell my daughter. If she was about to fight somebody, stay in the house until the cops come. But if my daughter was aggressively stabbing somebody after throwing somebody on the floor and the cop told her to stop and she didn't and she got killed, I would understand. That's but can me. we That's admit that opinion. bias does? Can we admit that bias does exist within the police <laughs> Ada, department? And how they treat black time. people Nobody versus white people? Exist. That's what that. the main thing but is. But I'm just saying every case is different. 800-585-1051. Let's talk about it. It's The Breakfast Club. I know it. I know it. I know it. I can't Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're talking about Dr. Umar Johnson's interview. And hello, who's this? Hello, my name is Max. Hey, what's up? Hello, Max. Yeah, so I'm a Russian guy. I've been living in New York for 10 years. And all this time, I've been dating only black or Spanish women. And currently, I'm married on a Guyanese princess. we together like six years. Congratulations. She's a beautiful son. She's four years old. And I just want to say that this doctor saying you cannot date out of your race. It sounds so like racist. You got to stop thinking like this, you know? I, I do not agree with him. Okay. Now, I didn't hear that part, but I agree with sir. you. I have no problem with people dating outside their race. My dad is Chinese, my mom is black, and I'm happy they got together and created me. Dr. Umar doesn't like it, though. Well, no, Dr. Umar <laughs> said he has no problem with the products of interracial uh, relationships. <laughs> Well, oh, you can't be not okay with it and then have no problem with the product of it. But you gotta I, listen. I, I don't. I don't agree with that either. I don't agree with it. But uh, I, I, I think what he said is interesting. Bless you, Eddie. Hello, who's this? Bless you, Eddie. Oh no, because Eddie sneezed. Our you producer. Said, you said that like Eddie's dating a white woman. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, how you guys doing? I'm doing well. How you doing, brother? Uh, honestly, I've been trying to get one of you guys, and honestly, I respect everyone. I listen to you guys every morning. I'm a truck driver. I appreciate, like, you guys always um, come up with some great topics. You keep me entertained. Oh, got you, got you, got okay. you. All right, the reason why I'm calling because that guy really pissed me off. Because I'm a veteran. I serve my country like anybody else did, too. My cousins are black and white from Massachusetts. And, two, I'm married to a, a Barbadian woman. I, I, trust me, I'm the lucky one on that one. And I've had three kids with her. I met her with two, but it just, what he said was wrong. Like, oh, it's all white people, all white people. I understand that. But the only way that we can survive in this world with this racism is all of us got to have more love in the heart. The, the white people that are acting stupid, <laughs> them in the head, bury them, get rid of them. That's <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. We're not even going to try to... <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or honestly, just wait for wait for that generation to die to die off, 
Yeah, we yeah. said that. We said that 15, 20 years ago, though. We thought that we thought that generation was going to die off, but then we saw that the racism get passed down to the younger generation. All right. Well, Dr. Umar Johnson called up 800-585-1051. And what we have to stop doing as a culture is when you hear something that you don't like, you say all of a sudden that person's canceled. That ish is whack. I mean, just listen, listen, listen. As, listen. as a community, you got to have a dialogue and you got to be able to have a conversation. And the cancel culture thing, when it when it comes to certain things, I absolutely positively agree. Yeah, when some, somebody says something that you don't like and you automatically want to cancel, that ish is whack. It's just, just an opinion at the end of the day. Like I said, some things I, with, with anybody, I, this is for everybody, some things I agree with, some things I disagree with, some things I simply don't know. And things I don't know, I listen to what a person's got to say and then I go do my own research on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. But all I is it okay to mute people? Yeah, it is. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta protect your peace. You, you gotta, gotta protect, protect your energy. I mute people and I restrict them, but I don't cancel. But all that cancel culture stuff, I, I hate it. it. It does not give people the right to have an opinion. And if they have an opinion that you don't like, you automatically want to cancel them. And then that's not how we should be in our community. We should be able to hear both sides and be able to have a conversation and break down and still be able to say, you know what? I didn't like his opinion. F him, but it's all good. We're on the di different things. But the way that people are with this cancel culture is really bad. It, it is really bad. But anyway. We got rumors on the way? Yes, and I want to know what Do Dr. Umar Johnson had to say about Caitlyn Jenner announcing that she is running for California governor. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Listen up. It's just in. All the gossip. Gossip. The Rumor Report. Gossip. Gossip. With Angela, Angela Yee. It's The Rumor Report. The Breakfast Club. All right. Well, Sweetie has says that she is going to an artist boot camp, and that's just to get everything under control for herself. I'm always a fan of people improving what it is that they're doing. So it's an artist development boot camp. And here's what she had to say. I'm actually in a boot camp right now, artist development. So they work at me. What mm -hmm. takes place in this artist development boot camp? What happens? Well, for me, I'm going to focus on what I struggle with. I struggle with um, breathing control. I'm going to work on my dance move, my details, all that good stuff. Okay. My just body, my stamina, my everything. Yeah, most artists, mo more artists definitely need to be in uh, some type of artist boot camp. I think a lot of times yep. these artists blow up so fast because they be, you know, making these songs on their own, putting mm -hmm. them on streaming services, then they pop off, then they get with a label. It's just like, yes, invest in these kids and, and, and make them better at their craft. Yep. Well, the full interview is on Apple Music. It's interesting because it reminds me of Motown, right? What they used to do at Motown where they would go to Barry Gordy's house and no matter how big you were, he said you had to come here and still do artist development, right? Still do the choreography, still do media training, still do all of those things. Yeah, what do, what do a and do nowadays? Like if you are an artist... Help make you, albums, hook you up online. with producers. But what if the, the what if the artist is already doing all of that? Look online, you send them beats, you try to help them with features... That's, that's not. Yeah. It's not like before. Even Diddy used to do that. Diddy used to have uh, training, mm -hmm. media training. They used to do uh, breathing techniques. Uh, they used to do all that with, 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 with Bad Boy. Even when we had Money Bag Yo on the other day, he was saying when he wanted somebody like he wanted Janae Aiko on the album, mm -hmm. he just asked Yo Gotti to do it. Sometimes. And sometimes they might think of collaborations for you you wouldn't think of. Sometimes they have a song that's perfect for you. Maybe the hook is already done. Mm -hmm. And they're like, this song would be perfect. So there's still a place for it, right? Yep. All right. Now, Caitlyn Jenner has announced uh, that she's running for California governor and she has filed the paperwork to run for office. Uh, she wrote on Twitter, Californians want better and need better from their politicians. Taking on entrenched Sacramento politicians and the special interests that fund them requires a fighter who isn't afraid to do what is right. I am a proven winner and the only outsider who can put an end to Gavin Newsom's disastrous time as governor. Well, I think some people would, uh, you know, his support of Donald, her, her support of Donald Trump would, would hurt her in that situation, right? I would think so, especially in a state like California. Yeah, so we shall see uh, what happens with that. But I know they said the family is not supporting her and her run. All right, now let's discuss um, Blueface. I saw that Blueface was trending over the weekend. By the way, Blueface was trending with R. Kelly. I don't know if you guys saw that, but there was mm -hmm. a video that surfaced where he was telling everybody, all the women, there's women living in his house and it's full of bunk beds. Women are sleeping in them. And he told everybody they had to get tattoos. Listen. We're getting tattoos today. Oh, yeah. Two or go home. Which one is it? Go tattoo. Yeah. Ooh, that's going to be it right there. Why R. Kelly though? Why not Flavor Flav or, uh, or Ray J or anybody who had a house full of women at some point? Why R. Kelly? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they're saying it looks like very cultish, is what people were thinking. Flavor so, Love look like a cult too. 
Now, it looks like, though, what they're saying is he's been working on this reality show for the past several months, kind of like a bad girls club type of thing, and streams exclusively on OnlyFans. That's all I'm saying. So, like, why R. Kelly? He, he could be shooting for a reality show. That's why I said Flavor of Love and Rage. Like, I, why y'all just jump to R. Kelly? Jesus. All right, now Adrian Broner has posted a video, and people were scared about a post that he did uh, about feeling suicidal. He said, I swear to God, sometimes I wish I was dead. MFs don't appreciate me on God. Just take me away from this ish before I do it myself. And a lot of people did reach out to him, and he posted, my brother stopped me, and uh, he put, thank God. I saw 50 Cent reached out to him as well. He said, damn, AB must be hit right now. We love you, boy. It's just time to lace up, call my phone. And here is Adrian Broner. They stopping him. He almost did it, but they got him. They, got him, <laughs> they finally we got not him. We're not going to let you do this. <laughs> it's they, okay. He was about to do it. <laughs> he was about to do it, but they got him. Yeah, it feels like, you know, Adrian Broner be going through it because we've seen him mm-hmm. just yeah. post certain things on social media at different times. So I'm, I'm glad he got brothers around him that love him and care about him and can mm-hmm. intervene in those type of situations because sometimes all you need is somebody just to show up for you mm-hmm. and pour into you. So I'm happy he has that. Mm-hmm. All right, Tyrese was also trending and that is because he was shaving his new girlfriend's Vagina on social media. I've seen that. <laughs> and she posted a picture of her feet up and you can see his head at the bottom of her feet. And she said, I will never, ever let go of my king. But does your man shave you, though? And then he, you see a picture of him holding up the razor. Yeah, Tyrese has to stop telling us that he's uh, depressed over his divorce because it doesn't seem like it. No, not at all. He, <laughs> he, wanted, he wanted his wife back like three weeks ago. And it's, now he's shaving poom pooms on Instagram. It's, yeah. Is he officially divorced? Well, I guess. No. Oh, okay. I mean, fine. Listen, you're supposed to move on, right? Yes. You can move on, definitely. But, you know. Yeah. You know, Like Jesse Reyes says, get over him by getting... What did she say? Get over her by getting under me. What is... Is that how it get goes? Under, yeah. under you, I think. They don't have a wax in it in Atlanta? <laughs> get over <laughs> And why are you doing all this on Instagram? I got to call Tyrese, man. Tyrese, you too old for this, bro. Oh, my goodness. You too old for this, man. All right. You, too, you, you, you can't be out here just... Is he trying to make his ex jealous or what is I, it? Like, you're doing a little too some much. People have a, a, some people have a shaving fetish. They like to shave well, their do, significant Don't do other. it on the gram, Tyrese. No. Tyrese, you 40-something years old. Like, you look like these young boys now. You're doing too much now. I'm after, I got to reach out to Tyrese. I think there's like 10 You never asked your woman to Atlanta. shave your butthole or nothing? No. And if I did, it wouldn't be on Instagram. Wait, what? You guys manscape there? I don't. Yes, I don't do nothing. But, but my I do butthole. myself. I got a manscaping. Oh, you act, you so act, you, you shave your own butthole? butthole. I don't wax. You have you ever gotten it? You can't have you ever word? gotten an ingrown hair? In my butt? What? Hold on, you wax the cheeks, Envy? I do not wax, but you know, I, I take care down there. I don't do nothing with my cheeks. All right, Amazon man. <laughs> I don't know what's going on back there. All right, I have no <laughs> idea. All I do is- <laughs> I manscape. All I, he does I do, is clap him. I do my pews. <laughs> That's what he does. I do my pews myself, and I don't know what's going on with the cheeks. All right. So you just leave the back like that? What else I'm supposed to do? I never even thought about it. No. You should think about it. Yeah, nah, think, think about cool. it. I'm cool. <laughs> Evie, how do you do? You put one leg up, or how do you do it? <laughs> how do you reach there? <laughs> this Drum, is get the fart sound. This Drum. is awkward. <laughs> All right, that is your rumor report. Yes. All right. What <laughs> do you sit Maybe down? Do you sit down and spread your? How do you do it? I ain't never heard a man say they wax their own ass. That's why I don't wax. Get on your, the wax. Yes, you. No, he shaves it. Do you get on your hands and knees and do it? All right. That's great. The vote. We'll see you tomorrow. Everybody else, <laughs> the People's Choice mixes up next. All right, Harry man. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Angela here, and the General Insurance has been helping people save money for nearly 60 years. They offer the quality coverage you deserve at prices you can afford. Make the right call and go with the General. Call 800 General or visit thegeneral.com. Some restrictions apply. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let me shout out to everybody in Orlando. I was in Orlando over the weekend doing my real estate seminar. I got, uh, there was six brothers that rolled, or that flew with me down there. Uh, two of them have never even got on a plane before. So the fact that uh, we were able to take them down to Orlando and, and, and teach them how to do real estate, and they were interested in, in investment property, properties and in buying their own property. So they were super duper excited. And also uh, in Orlando, congratulations to Edgar Balanga. Uh, he won his uh, 17th fight. He didn't knock him out, though. Almost did. Put him on his ass five times, but uh, 
Shout out to Edgar Belanga and his whole team, man. It was it was a great fight. Great weekend. Well, I was in New Orleans over the weekend, so I definitely want to shout out. Y'all know I love New Orleans. So I was out there. I actually had a chance to see Jay Electronica. Of course, we went to one of my favorite restaurants there, Murrow's. And Larry Murrow's been on The Breakfast Club before, so I know you guys are familiar with him. But I just saw everybody. And thanks again to Greg from We That. I linked up with him, too, while I was out there to get my products in the supermarket. It's a big deal to be able to do that. So I appreciate everybody at Rouse's for just working with us on this coffee company cup and on drink fresh juice. It's been a lot of work for me behind the scenes. So I'm just grateful that it looks like something's happening. And shout out to my guy, Fee. I actually went with him and his new artist, RJ. They were feeding the homeless yesterday. So I love seeing things like that take place. Dope. And last but not least, I want to shout out to DJ Scoop Doo. He had a pop-up shop out there for his clothing line, Bread Over Bed, and he did a lip service collaboration. So it was an event-filled weekend for me. So thank you, New Orleans. I always have a great time there. Okay. All right, well, we'll be back with the positive note. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Atlanta, what up, man? I can't wait to see you guys July 3rd. That car show is going to be crazy. A lot of surprises. Shout to the beat in Atlanta. And if you're in the surrounding city or whatever, you can make it a destination weekend. I know a lot of things are canceled because of COVID, but we are uh, Atlanta's open. It'll be socially distancing. It's going to be great. Uh, and there's not too many tickets left. So hopefully I get to see you guys in Atlanta. And we've been talking about this movie. I know we talked about Quest Love and his directorial debut. It's called Summer of Soul. Well, they actually put out the trailer yesterday during the Oscars. And I'm excited for it because it's never before seen concert performances by Stevie Wonder, Nina Simone, Sly and the Family Stone, Gladys Knight and the Pips. And these are all people I actually got to see Nina Simone perform before. But it was uh, six weeks in the summer of 1969, the Harlem Cultural Festival. And a lot of people don't even talk about it. We talk about what stock but we don't talk about this summer of soul with these iconic artists so this is going to be really amazing and you can watch summer of soul in theaters and on hulu on july 2nd but you guys saw the trailer right yeah trailer looks dope man yeah i did i don't know why i was thinking that this documentary was about soul train though maybe because of quest love's love for soul train maybe. and maybe the whole summer so i don't know why i was thinking this was about soul train they did show don cornelius yeah. in the trailer a little bit though well, I remember when he first announced it, and so this is really exciting that it's finally coming to fruition. They said the footage actually sat in a basement for 50 years and had never been seen. Imagine that. I remember D'Angelo used to say Sly and the Family Stone was who he modeled himself after when it came to performances. So I can't wait to see it. Yeah, congratulations to Questlove. When, when does it come out? Uh, Summer of Soul. That comes out actually in theaters and on Hulu on July 2nd, same weekend as your car show. Great. Now, Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do. And the positive note comes from Don Miguel Ruiz. You know, I love Don Miguel Ruiz. I love Toltec Wisdom. If you've never read The Four Agreements, you should. But Don Miguel Ruiz says, when we believe in lies, we cannot see the truth. So we make thousands of assumptions and we take them as truth. One of the biggest assumptions we make is that the lies we believe are the truth. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done? <laughs> 